वेलकम फ्रेंड्स आई एम वेरी हैप्पी टू बी बैक इन कैलगरी अगेन इट्स वंडरफुल टू सी दैट देर आर सीकर्स ऑफ आवर ट्रू होम ऑफ आवर अल्टीमेट ट्रूथ ऑल ओवर दिस प्लेनेट नो मैटर वेयर यू गो समाइम्स इट्स अ रिमोट प्लेस दे बिलीव नो बडी कैन इवन हेयर ऑफ समथिंग लाइक ट्रू होम सच खंड एंड स्टिल वी फाइंड पीपल देयर who have been seekers and sitting in lonely places there are people who are seeking the same thing that we are seeking and they are hiding in small places they do not know where to go this is the most wonderful arrangement that our own creator made for us that if we get fed up with this show we are seeing here if we get fed up of our life in the physical plane here he has made an arrangement for us to go back to our true home the arrangement he has made is very simple when we are tired of this world we think this is not our place we become a seeker of something else the seeking takes place in our heart it is the seeking that is the secret to finding the moment you seek your true home you are guaranteed to find it no matter what no matter where you are if you seek your true home if you want to say this is not my place i am tired fed up i have discovered this is not my home and i want to go to my true home and this seeking comes in your in yourself you are bound to go home this is automatic natural made arrangement how does it operate when you seek you come across another human being just like yourself no difference between you and that other human being except in the awareness of that human being you are only aware of what is happening outside that human being comes into our life and he knows everything including where the true home is and he is in the true home when he is speaking to us as a human being that's the difference my own master hazur maharaj baba sawan singh ji great master he used to say in those days there were no television but there were radio sets he used to say if you place 10 radio sets here on the table and nine of them are not connected to the power source only one is connected they all look the same the structure is the same the radio sets are the same only one will give you the news of the world because it is connected to the power source others look like that are like that built like that but they are not connected to the power source a perfect living master is a human being like us but he is connected to our true home at all times we can all be the same person it does not mean he special qualifications we all have the same capacity the same mechanism inside us the same way to go back which he has there is no difference this is god given creator given gift to us that when we want to go to our true home we have to seek and we will find now what happens if you seek we seek all the time we seek things outside in the world i should have more money i should have a better house i should have a new model of car i should buy jewelry i should buy new clothes i should buy new furniture we are seeking but we are seeking things of this world therefore we get those things whatever we are seeking we get them sometimes we don't get it immediately we don't have the means to get it and we get it later sometimes as later as another life but we get it whatever you want you get it if you want all the worldly things you will get them if your seeking is strong i want this worldly thing at some point in time you will get it gautam buddha said that if you have a desire in your mind and it is not possible to have that supposing you want to have, have a simple thing like a cup of coffee but there is no coffee desire is registered in your mind even if it takes 1 million years of rebirth you will get your cup of coffee and you will keep on having birth after birth till you get your coffee 
such is the system here the desires are holding us for fulfillment whatever desires we have we have to fulfill them does not matter how long it takes how many births we have to take how many time we come back for the same thing so what is holding us up here even though sometimes we feel we want to go to our true home is our own desires for things which are only here our desires create another thing they create attachment when we desire something and we get it then we are attached then we want more of it so the desire and attachment is keeping us here very simple there is only two things that are keeping us here our desires and our attachments if we have no desire for outside but desire for our true home we will get that it all depends on what we desire what we seek that we get it when there is a seeker he will find a human being who can guide him to his true home such a human being we call him a perfect living master a perfect living master is a person whom we call master because he can guide us he is perfect because he operates from beyond the mind all imperfection is created by the mind living because living like us he can talk to us supposing he is not living but is perfect master but is not living he has died already then he can't tell us anything because we always as human beings speak with our tongue speak with a living person if we want to speak with a dead person we will speak in our head when we speak in our head we speak with our own mind there is no other way let nobody make a mistake that because we are getting another voice in our head it is somebody else it's our own mind people tell me we have very living masters but we have never seen them where are your masters who are you have never seen they are in the himalayan mountains up in north of india near tibet i said fortunately during my service career in india i was posted there on the border of tibet i was working in the border lahaul spiti that was my territory i went to the very edge and met many masters who know nothing about you so how are they helping you sitting there some are hiding in caves and when i asked one of them there are people in the other side of the world in america they think that you are helping them he said i can't even help myself how can i help them so therefore this is talking to our own mind and we think we are being helped by a master who we can neither see nor speak to nor hear that is why if you want to have real effect you can fool yourself by thinking you are being guided by somebody else but the truth is you can only be guided by somebody who can say no to you as a living person the mind will say yes mind will say now master i am going to do something i know it's a little naughty but you know who cares <laughs> mind will say okay one time is all right a <laughs> guru has given me permission from inside no this is all talking with our own mind unless you have a living person a living master you cannot get true guidance you get guidance of the mind which is interested in fulfillment of desires outside the mind is working hard to make you get more desires and more attachments outside how can it help you to go somewhere else and therefore when you seek you do not seek with the mind the mind says don't seek but something else in us says seek how do we split ourselves that something is telling us not to do something and something is telling us do it we all have this split in our mind now is it the mind which is two parts some people think like that they say there is a, a, a lower mind there is a higher mind some people say the mind divides itself and the large part remains the mind and little part becomes conscience which tells us this is right this is wrong so we all carry all this arrangement in our head that the conscience tells us wrong the mind says well one once in a while is all right and therefore but it is not it doesn't stop there supposing you do something which your conscience says is not right and if you are religious minded it will not say right it will say it is a sin 
That's what religion has introduced, worse than not right. It has made it sin. If you do this, you're committing sin. So when we commit sin, then what happens? We don't leave the sin there. We carry it in the form of guilt. And you know, we are carrying so much guilt because of certain things we did. Knowingly or unknowingly, we carry guilt. And what does the guilt do? The guilt holds you back in the past, never makes you move in the future. If you are feeling guilty about something, you will live in the past. Oh, I should not have done it. Oh, I regret it. You are constantly thinking of something that happened in the past. When we carry such huge number of items of guilt, we can't move forward at all. We are trapped in that. So there are many traps here. We are living in a world which has many traps in order to keep us here longer and longer so that the, the population should keep on growing and more and more soul should come and get trapped. Now, I have used the word soul. What is soul? Soul is what makes us alive. Soul is what makes our senses alive. Soul is what makes our mind alive. Soul is what makes our thinking system alive. Soul is living power, power that makes us alive. Soul is what makes us conscious. Soul is what gives us awareness of what is happening around us. Soul is not mind. Soul is not body. Soul is not even our sense perceptions. Soul is the power that makes all these work. And that is our true reality. Soul is never born. Soul never dies. Soul lives in its true home, in such hunt does not live here. It lives here in different bodies. It does not live as soul. In order to see what is soul, you have to leave these bodies behind. Bodies, not one body. What are the different bodies we have to leave behind to find our own soul? First of all, this physical body. This physical body is making us feel we are just here for a short time. We were born in this world. One day we will die. We are finished. We don't know what happens. That this body is our self. That is not true. Even when you die, inside you something else lives much longer. Some people have uh, past life regressions. They can see that they were there before this body was born. Some people have near death experiences. They find that when the body dies, there is some other life, they see lights and they see other places. So much evidence is there that this body is only temporary cover upon ourselves, temporary costume we are wearing for physical experience. When we are in a physical body, we look around, we see a physical world and we live in this physical world. When we don't have a physical body, there is no physical world. Then what is the next body? If we lose this body by death or some other means, out of body experience, supposing we somehow don't have this experience of this body at all, what will we look like? We will look like the same like we look now. Because what we look like depends on our sense perceptions, not on the body. If we can still see with the eyes, if we can still hear with the ears, if we can taste with our tongue, if we can move our body, hands and feet, and yet we don't have this body, what will we call that body? That body will have the sense perceptions, but no weight, no flesh, no bones, and still it will be there. Who says this? Who, I am telling you something, there should be somebody who's authenticating it. Who can check this out, what I am saying? All of you can check it out. You all have the capacity to check out what I just said. You don't have to die to check this out. You can check it out today by dying while you are living. How can one die while one is living? All the scriptures I have read talk about dying while living. They all talk that real reality comes to you only when you die while living. Which means while we are living in this body, we can have the same experience we will have when we die and something goes out of us, which is still there, but the body is not there. 
how can we die while we are living by becoming unaware of the body actually do you know when we go to sleep at night we die while living because we have to dream we we don't know where the body is when we wake up we are back in the body but during that time when we are not aware of your body we don't get any other experience except a dream like person walking around which is ourselves in a different form but that is so unreal compared to our wakeful state things move so fast in a dream and we can't have any control over it we have different rules of life in the dream in dream one can go from one place you are in calgary and next moment you are in vancouver and looks very normal in a dream and if it happens here you will be say there is miracle what has happened so the rules are different but we don't feel more real when we wake up we feel real that was just a dream this is real so that is not dying while living but if we can do the same thing while we are awake not by going to sleep then that would be dying while living so the method of trying out whether we have another self or beside the body or not is to do a practice a meditational practice by which you can withdraw your awareness from this body the practice is very simple the practice is to know first of all where are we right now if we are not the body if we are not the body where are we controlling this body from where are we looking out from the eyes where are we hearing in the ears the eyes are placed above the rest of the body so we can see it's just below the head the ears are on both sides a tongue this all in this small area that we are having all our contact with this physical world so we must be operating from somewhere within this portion of the body no rest is just attached for other functions it just works for us but if we have control over anything the control seems to be only in a small area which is the face and the head and the ears up to throat maybe above the throat seems to be the controlling area where we use it every day where do we think from a very important thing when we think you can close your eyes and ask this question where do i think from thinking is in the head where exactly in the head do we think from this is the first stage of trying to understand what is dying while living we are thinking from behind the eyes if you contemplate this very point over and over again where do i think from where am i operating from if i am not the body if i am merely controller of the body where am i doing it from you will find it is behind the eyes in the center that point has been called third eye third eye center center of consciousness center of wakeful consciousness nukta so many words have been used in different languages to describe the same point that point by bi biology anatomy by anatomy of the head if you see it right in the center most protected point with the skull of the head in the center where there is a pineal gland and there is a pituitary body next to each other it's right in the center most protected place and it appears that when we are conscious our consciousness is operating from that point i remember in india i was having we were having a vip coming vvip coming from another country and he had a car accident and became unconscious and went into a coma since he was a very important person we got the best brain surgeons and brain doctors from all around the world to see how we can get him out of his coma and one very senior surgeon was examining that i was standing to the chief minister of the state at that time the chief minister asked him sir can you tell me what makes a person conscious now this man has become unconscious we are trying to restore his consciousness where does a person become conscious or unconscious and this very eminent surgeon said sir this is a question which all of us have been asking for thousands of years and we have no answer not even the medical profession one thing we know that if with a laser beam 
we touch this area which is the pineal gland and the pituitary body hanging there in the medulla oblongata right in the center of the anatomy of the head if we put a say laser there the conscious man becomes unconscious so we know that the area where this whatever strange thing it is which is consciousness it is operating from there so from science metaphysics personal experience you can find that the consciousness which is making us aware is operating from behind the eyes in our head now we have been given some very big gifts for our daily life one of them is called attention we can put our attention where we like when we read a book we put our attention on what we are reading and we understand what we are reading we don't scatter our attention sitting idly we scatter our attention everything is known equally when we want to do something talk to somebody we put our attention there what is the unique quality of this attention is you can concentrate it wherever you like very big gift given to humanity that we have a power of attention that means our awareness can be focused wherever we like and we are focusing on so many things in our life but we never focus it inside we always focus it outside how would it work if you could focus your attention on the third eye center behind the eyes in the head what would happen if you were to imagine imagination is another good gift if you were to imagine you are sitting inside your head in the middle exactly at the point which i described third eye center area if you are sitting there by your imagination and continue to focus your attention and concentrate it there what would happen a lot of people have done it you can also do it if you do it after some time you will not know where your hands and feet are naturally you are putting all your attention there after more time you will not know where your legs and arms are stay there longer you will know more know where your body is you will have died while living you are not dead everything working normal but your attention has concentrated you in your head to a point where you are not aware of the physical body at that time you will find you are still alive you can still see you can still hear you can do everything and yet you are doing it with something which looks like imaginary but you are doing the same things with no use of this physical body it's it's a great experience then it depends how long you can stay in that state you can stay there 15 minutes 1 hour 2 hours and then think of this body you are back here because you just put your attention there to get that experience but it's a very valuable experience because it makes you know that your consciousness your soul your ability to be aware is not dependent upon this body in fact it gets enhanced when you are in that state you see better you have every one of you has 20 20 or better vision when you are in that state you can read anything there without glasses there's no weight we have in that body any one of you can try it out this is not a very difficult exercise all it requires is that you withdraw your attention from outside things and put it behind the eyes at the third eye center and you can have an experience of not only an out of body experience which is sometimes a confusion merely out of body experience can also be done by another yogic practice the yoga yoga practices which are relying upon the energy centers below the eyes you can concentrate on your heart in yogic practice there is a heart chakra hriday chakra is one of the important points from where your heart beats and gives you circulation all over the body and if you put your attention there you can also have an out of body experience but in that out of body experience you are aware of this body and that you are moved out you don't don't become unaware of this body you are aware of this body and that you can move out and see the body and come back and many people in the west have been trying this out of body experience and they feel there is a cord that is attaching them to that out of body and they can be pulled back if the cord breaks this body will die so they are very nervous when they do that i have practiced with them and i see how nervous they get 
that cord may not break and then we will die. They are afraid of death. But if you do the other way around, not heart, not a energy center, but center of awareness, this human body is the best designed thing in this whole creation. I do not know anything created, whether by man or by nature, more complicated and more useful like the human body. The human body has a different function at the eye level. Above the eyes is different. Below the eyes is different. Below the eyes are called Shakti, energy. The, all the energies are below the eyes. And they operate from different parts of the body. Behind and above the eyes is awareness, knowing, knowing what is there. Awareness, these are centers of awareness, these are centers of energy. Big difference. People think energy and awareness the same thing. It is not. Energy can give you energetic experiences, even out-of-body experience, even things flashing around you, different colors can be seen. Lots of experiences can take place. But you don't get higher awareness that you have a body which is 1,000 years old. But if you are concentrating there and you become unaware of the body, the inner body you can remember was there 500 years ago, 1,000 years ago, your own memory in that body comes back. Big difference. Most of the yogis have been practicing their yoga. Yoga means union, union with your true self. In fact, they thought that the whole cycle of practice of yoga arises from the two eyes, where you are looking in the wakeful state, and going down to the bottom, and through the various energy centers, right at the rectum, the genitals, the, uh, the, the navel, the heart, the throat, and the eyes. You go through a cycle, swing like this. They thought the body was designed like a house, which I also believe it is very much like a house because it's got different levels. It's got different energy centers, so you could compare them with a house with six floors. It's like a six-floor house. Eyes are at the sixth floor, and the bottom is at the ground floor. So you move by one floor to the other, and there are steps to move. You can take steps to go up, or you can take elevator. It's a very modern house. The spine makes the elevator. These yogis have done this to go from the wakeful state of the two eyes along the elevator down to the bottom. They take steps one by one and have different chantings, different mantras for every stage. Those, uh, those mantras are the steps to move from one to the other. And they ultimately come back here and they find that we are truly what we are here. They forget that's where we started from also. <laughs> they just made a big round of energy centers, had many experiences on the way. But where was the awareness? Same awareness, they came back to tell us, oh, now we have found out this thing. But they found this world as real as they left it. No difference. But if you are do doing a different circuit, not this one, a different circuit that goes up around the head, in the head only, then you get higher and higher awarenesses and you discover that the sense perception that you have, the power with which you see, hear, touch, taste, smell, that power does not belong to this body at all. It belongs to the inner body. And the inner body is nothing but that power of sense perceptions. And therefore, sense perceptions, when they function independently with the soul and mind in it, it becomes what we call the astral body, suksham sharir. It becomes light because there is no weight, there is no flesh, no bones, and yet it can see, touch, taste, move, fly, because it's totally different. There's no matter in it. It's only sense perceptions. The two experiences are very different. We get confused sometimes when we meet different holy people and they tell us, one tells us, go to the chakras here, some tell, no third eye center, somebody says, open the inner eye. So too many terminology has been used, so much terminology, so we are not sure where we are going. But these perfect living masters, who operate from beyond the mind, who operate from the soul level alone, who have seen and function from the true home when they come in front of us, they are not talking from what they have learned. 
they are not talking from where they have gone they are talking from what they are seeing at the time when they are here with us they hold that consciousness of totality of every level at that time they are the ones who tell us that the soul is very different thing from the mind mind is very different thing from our sense perceptions sense perceptions are very different thing from our physical body these are different bodies you might say covers upon our soul and soul is generating these bodies around itself for different experiences we are now covered by three major bodies starting from where we are sitting now we can experience our physical body if we become unaware of the physical body by a simple sadhana simple meditation simple method of withdrawing yourself behind the eyes putting your attention there becoming unaware of the body you open you are you got rid for the time being of this cover and you can know what the inner cover can do you will be amazed at the sharpness of your sense perceptions when they are not covered by the body first time you will realize that the body does not help us to see or hear or touch it hinders us from seeing properly or it is it's, it's it's a kind of a cover upon it so we are seeing through a cover not seeing bright enough we are hearing through a cover not hearing enough this is a wonderful experience to know that our real self lies inside us what if we did the same experiment with that inner body what if we were to find a third eye center is still their eyes are there and we go to third eye center of the inner body nothing to do with this physical body we are now already experiencing that and we meditate concentrate our attention on the inner body we will become unaware of the senses also then we will have no physical body no sensory body yet we will be alive no form at all because senses need the form we don't need a form to be conscious what we will be doing will be something that does not need a form even now thinking when we think in our head we don't need a form we can still think that body which is now opening up when we are unaware of the physical body and our sensory astral body sukshma sharir when we get unaware of that we open up another body of ours which can think which can be everywhere which can travel faster than anything and that is our own mind mind thinks and mind is our body first time one discovers that what we th thought was our head brain thinking was actually our own self when it is without a physical body and without sense perceptions this is not something i am not telling you something that some rare scientist has done we all can do it everybody sitting here can do it require the same simple practice what are we try try to do go within ourselves go more within ourselves the truth is all inside us highest knowledge is all inside us highest awareness is inside us our true home is inside us our creator god is inside us everything is inside us the deeper you go inside more you will find because the structure of this experience is built from inside out not the other way around this world is not built outside this world is a creation of our experiences creation of our perception and perception is from inside out and we our own experience that we are there is inside out ultimately when the mind comes it can lead to so many experiences we think we all we are so many people having different bodies and different minds there you will find there is only one mind we are sharing all of us and now that you can't ex explain here at all how one mind is being shared everybody is thinking differently how can we all be participating in the same mind universal mind is creating everything the biggest saints have come and biggest mystics have come and told us that here unity is one that all thoughts are arising from one level and they talk of the universal mind and they say that is where you will find everything merges and has all been separated from there as yet we do not call them perfect living masters because they are still talking about the mind they are still talking of something which is which is born and dies like this physical body it may have 3 4 million years of life of physical time it still 
not the soul. It's not pure consciousness. It is something that only operates in time and space. It creates time, creates space, creates events, creates karma, creates all this, and then operates. Our soul has no nothing to do with any of these things. We just give power to the mind, and it begins to create all this. We give power from the mind to our senses, and we get a sens sensory body. And all that combination gives power to the physical body, and we are here in this world, experiencing a physical world. And all this can be discovered by the reverse process of going within, step by step. Perfect living masters tell us that our true home is beyond the mind, beyond the universal mind. Our true home is not in space and time. Our true home is from where space and time is being generated, being created. Our true home is where the minds are created, where the universal mind is created. Our soul does not have any of these things. Our soul is the power that creates all these things. So if we have to discover our own soul, we have to go beyond that. Now here, this is a big problem. And that is where the difficulty of finding such a master exists because most of the masters of the world have taken us to universal and only one mind and said, this is our true home. Nobody has come and told us that this is, can't be a true home. A true home creates these things. Therefore, to go beyond that, we can do nothing. Because when we do something, like I am telling you, concentrate your attention here, anything we do requires our mind's effort. If there is no mind, how can you put effort? Therefore, the mind fails. Effort fails. No amount of effort can ever take us to our soul because effort is all mind. And we stop there. So many enlightened people telling us about the truth of insight, going within, are stopped there because they tell us how to put the effort. Now, how can you be effortless? A friend of mine, I was studying in the Harvard University. He was a great uh, meditator. So one day, he wrote an email to me. He said, my friend, I have found out we can never find the truth with effort. And therefore, it has to be something effortless. At the end of the email, he wrote, writes, now I'm going to try very hard to be effortless. <laughs> this is, mind is like that. Even to be effortless, we want to put effort. There's nothing that we can do without effort. Can you think of something that is without effort that you can do? Nothing. Everything in the world requires ego. I am going to do it. I will do it. Effort. And here we are talking of a state of being, state of our reality, where effort does not work because it is beyond the mind. There is one thing that can work beyond effort. That is being pulled by the love of somebody. Love can pull you where no effort works. Have you ever had made effort when you fall in love with somebody? No, love pulls. Therefore, the only way, I am telling you very, very strongly, from experience, the only way that can take you beyond effort, beyond mind, is the pull of unconditional strong love of somebody who is operating from beyond the, life, beyond the mind. That's the secret. The secret of discovery of your soul is to be pulled by such strong love that can transcend and put your mind behind and draw you, draw your soul to itself. And that happens if you have to go beyond the mind, beyond universal mind, and go into your true home and find out you are a soul. This is exactly the role of a perfect living master I'm describing. He operates from beyond the mind. And his love is unconditional. If you want to know, is there some human being who could be a possible candidate for perfect living master? I'll give you a test. If his love is unconditional, he comes in the good list. You can check out. If you provoke him and he does not love, cancel him out. If you hate him and then he doesn't love you, cancel him out. A perfect living master is one who will love you if you love him. He will love you if you hate him. He will love you if you kill him. He will love you anyway. There is no condition whatsoever. Why would he do that? Why would a 
<laughs> Why would he do this kind of thing to give you such unconditional love that you don't even care? He will do it because your soul is seeking and ready to go back home, period. The only secret of getting an experience of that unconditional love is to be a seeker of your true home. When you seek that, you don't seek with the mind, you seek with the soul. Mind resists. I don't have time for that kind of thing. And yet your soul is seeking inside. People sometimes see their own neighbors, own brothers, sisters, own relatives. There's a very good friend of mine. He has been on the spiritual path all his life. He came and told me that his brother is coming to see him. And the brother does not believe in any of these things. So please don't talk any spiritual stuff. Talk politics and all that stuff. <laughs> also, he's a rich man. Talk of money. How to make more money? He will love you. <laughs> I said, OK, I'll meet the brother. So the brother came. And I met him at my friend's house. The brother was very nice. He came with his wife. The brother and the wife were there. And they said, we understand you give talks. I said, no, 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 but those are, you know. <laughs> I'm trying to avoid him talking about it. He said, can I attend your talk? Now, I am wondering what I will do with him. And his brother is shocked. What will happen? If he goes and hears my talk, that will be very bad. So then he will criticize his own brother. You are caught up with this kind of a cult or something. This is terrible the place we are in. Have you forgotten your religion? Have you forgotten your God? You are talking, listening to a man who is not talk, who talking of some other stuff. He, my, my friend was very apprehensive what will happen. But the brother and the wife came to the talk. I was also very apprehensive. I wouldn't look at them. What are they doing? <laughs> and after the talk, they wanted to have personal interview, both of them. I said, all right, now I have to beat this challenge. They came to me for a personal time, personal interview. And they said, what you spoke, we have been seeking from childhood. And my brother doesn't know. What you are talking of is exactly what we have been looking for. All our life we have waited to this, for this moment. I'm telling you, seeking is something very different. It is not what we talk to people about. It's inside. And we know it. There is certain knowing which is different from rational knowing. What's the difference? One is derived by thinking. You think about something and you know. That's called rational knowledge, rational thinking, because you applied your reason to thinking. The other thing comes suddenly to you without thinking. It's called intuition, gut feeling. What is gut feeling? It comes to you suddenly, no time, no thought. And then there is something you think and you ponder over it and then you get that knowledge. They are two different things. This knowledge that comes by thinking and rational process of understanding, logical process of understanding, is a mental thing. It involves the mind. The mind gives you that knowledge. Gut feeling, the mind has no part in it. It comes from your soul. Now if you want to know that we have a soul that is giving power to mind, senses, and body. And that is our real self. Because it does not die, everything else will finish at some point or the other. But that will never finish. It has never been born, will never die. All the scriptures talk about it, all the religions talk about it. Nobody has tried to find out where it is. It's right inside. Now, the difference is that when the soul functions in us, it does three things which the mind cannot do. One is intuitive knowledge. Intuition is spiritual, not mental, always. I should pause here and tell you of another friend of mine who said, I discovered intuition is the reality, not reasoning. So I said, then I'm now practicing intuition. I said, how do you do that? I said, just come suddenly. No, I try very hard to be intuitive. I said, give me an example. Give me an example. He said, look, I want to decide whether I want to go to Vancouver or not. I'm going to get intuitive answer. Uh, going. I said, what was that? Ah, before that. It's thought. Intuition never comes like that. 
In fact, intuition comes when you make a plan for, for going to Vancouver, and intuition some say, don't. Why not? Mind says, all my plans are ready. My gut feeling says, no. Maybe there's going to be an accident. Something is going to happen. Where did my feeling come from? Intuition does not come through time and space. Thinking always requires time and space. Big difference between the two. One is mental, one is spiritual. And we all have intuitive feelings every day. We all get. And then what do we do with the intuitive knowledge we get? We erase it. We push it down with our thinking. We think thinking is more important than intuition. The truth is it's exactly the opposite. I give you a little exercise. Try it out. One month live and make your decisions with your gut feeling. And make your mind do it what your gut feeling says. Your life will change for the better. What we are doing is exactly the opposite. We think what we should do. We have, don't have enough knowledge. Our premises itself is defective because it's not complete. We use logic to come to a decision. And next day we say, oh, I wish I had known better. We are regretting all our decisions all the time because we're using only the mind for decision making. If we use intuition for decision making, you'd be right. When we make a decision by thinking about it, we are using our mind, a limited capacity instrument given to us. Mind is not us. This is a very big mistake. And very important thing if you want to have higher experience in meditation, that never think your thinking machine is yourself. If somebody said, I can think, therefore that is me. It's incorrect. Correct thing is, I am the conscious power, power of consciousness, making a machine in me called the mind think. That's the truth. And I can separate myself from the thinking machine. That's the truth. So therefore, the soul is not the mind. Soul is separate from the mind. The soul functions in these three things. The experience of true love is always soul, spiritual. The experience of intuitive knowledge is always soul not mine. And the experience of feeling so happy without cause, the state of bliss or happiness which we call is also spiritual not mind. Mind can neither create any of these things nor enjoy this. It co can comment upon it. When this happens, the mind comments upon it. It's a commentator all the time. If you notice that the mind never stops thinking. 24-7 it is thinking. You sleep, it is still thinking. You wake up, it is still thinking. You can't stop it. Some, somebody said a yogi can stop thinking. I said, I would be very happy to meet him. But I met one. Again, in the university, I met somebody who said he can stop thinking. That's what, again, in Cambridge, Massachusetts, that I, he told me, I have learned by a special art of a certain positioning of the body, that means certain portion, certain kind of uh, asanas I can do. I can twist my body around in such a way. I didn't know how the body twisting can do something to the mind, but anyway. He said that by that system, he can stop thinking. I said, how long can you stop thinking? He said, sometimes about half an hour. I said, come over to my apartment and demonstrate to me because I feel if you can stop thinking for one minute, you will be able to do it forever. If you can really stop thinking for one minute. So he came into my apartment and he sat there. I said, all right, you put your asana position, whatever you want. So he curled himself, lotus, lotus uh, position of the feet and his arm somewhere else and whatever. He could cause the contortion of his body when he was ready. I said, when you are ready, I'll be looking at my watch. I will count 60 seconds. When, I, when the watch comes to the minute head, I will clap. When it reaches 60 seconds later, I'll clap again. First clap, you stop thinking. Second clap, you start thinking again. Then we'll review what happens to a human mind when he's not even thinking. And it has done consciously. He's going to do it consciously in front of me. So. He said, I'm ready. So I gave a clap like this, and I waited. 
60 seconds later, I get another clap. And he began to think. And I said, now, did you stop thinking between the first clap and the second? Yes. I said, now I have a few questions to review. What happened? My mind is totally blank. What happens? I said, when I gave the first clap, how did you know that's the time to stop thinking? Something must have triggered because you were waiting for it. So I gave a clap and you decided to stop thinking. How did you decide? Now don't guess. Recall. It just happened. Remember what happened. He recalled. He said, yes, I remember. When I heard the clap, I said to myself, yeah, this is the time to stop thinking. I said, that looks like a thought to me. <laughs> he said, no, that was just a few seconds. OK, we'll cut the experiment down to 57 seconds now. Three were thinking still. Or after three seconds, how did you know that when I clap again, you will start thinking? Don't make a guess. Remember what happened. He remembered. Oh, yes, I remember. Then I said, and I will not think till the second clap comes. <laughs> a few more seconds gone. I then said, after that, what happened? Because if you, if you completely stop thinking, you could never hear the clap again. So we reviewed. And at the end of a 10-minute, five-minute conversation, he put his hands like this. Oh, my god, I was thinking more in those 30, 60 seconds than ever before. <laughs> what made him think that he had stopped thinking? He, he could not understand how he really believed he was not thinking. And yet, he was thinking all the time. I had to explain to him why he thought he was not thinking. Because the mind does not think in one channel. You can be thinking certain words and stop those words, and you are thinking at a different level. You don't know that's also a thought. This is particularly known to those who do mantra, chanting in the mind. They do Simran in the mind. When they are repeating the words, they think they are repeating the words. They can hear a commentator on top of it. No, you are going too fast. You are going too slow. That's also mind. That's also thought. The mind can think in so many channels. Most of us use three, four channels. I was once posted in a job where I had the good fortune to receive His Holiness Dalai Lama. He, he had to escape from Tibet. And the Chinese attacked. And he came to India. I was a civil servant in India. It, I was given the responsibility to take care of him and to house him in Dharamsala. I was posted there. So I received him. And he was a young man, and he was very keen to know because we used to compare our meditation techniques. He had two tutors with him, senior tutors, who taught him how to meditate. He was a young man. And I used to have a Land Rover given to me by the government. We used to go out, and by the time he learned to speak a little bit of our English in the languages, I would discuss with him. He discussed the system of the different levels of the mind. And he observed, he could observe up to eight levels of the mind thinking. And we think we have stopped thinking and we are now doing our, our similar. We are doing our repetition of holy words in the mind. Holy words are going on and we are thinking of all the other things of the world on top of it. So therefore, that's what made the man mistake that he, was, he could stop thinking. He could only shift from one channel to another and he thought he stopped thinking. When I made him recall that, nobody can stop thinking. Thinking is like the heartbeat for the body. Thinking is for the mind. If you stop thinking, you will die. It's as simple as that. Thinking is an automatic component of having a mind. Therefore, we think all the time. And that is why nobody has been able to stop thinking. What you can do when this is you still your mind, Stillness of mind does not mean stop thinking. Stillness of mind is keep the mind away from yourself. That you can do. You always hear the words of your mind when you say you are thinking. Thinking as a perception, thinking as a knowledge is not based upon thinking. It's based upon listening to what you are thinking. The real secret of all experiences is listening. Supposing you are looking at something. I am looking at these flowers. How do I see these flowers? The flowers create an image in my head. 
बहुत इमेज येलो रेड इस थिंग जस्ट कम्बिनेशन ऑफ कलर्स एंड शेप आई कॉन्ट कॉल दम फ्लावर्स वॉट एम सींग कैन नॉट बी कॉल्ड फ्लावर्स दैट हु इज कॉलिंग इट फ्लावर्स माई माइंड द माइंड इंटरप्रेट्स ना वेन इट इंटरप्रेट्स दैट दीज आर फ्लावर्स इट डज नॉट से दीज आर फ्लावर्स इट स्पीक्स एंड आई लिसन एंड माइंड सेज फ्लावर्स आई नो इट्स फ्लावर्स This is such a subtle subject I am coming to that if you study all your experiences of all five senses, they are all dependent upon listening. And therefore, I can tell you the summary of it is: the soul listens, the mind speaks. It's a divided function. The soul listens, the mind speaks. People who want to do chanting, want to do similar repetition of holy words, they repeat the words. most often with their tongue the tongue moves even if they want to do it mentally the tongue moves along with it it's like speaking and they speak something and the mind is running all over the world this is not and simran this is not repetition of holy words because the mind is not coming under control it's supposed to be controlling your mind so you can make the mind do what you want mind is a machine it's like a computer now you can't lead your life on what the computer says you should tell the computer what to do you should tell the mind what to think not what the th- thought is we live according to that so we have become slaves of our own machine called mind so we should be owners and controllers our whole life changes with one little change if you start using the mind to think what you want to think and not what the mind wants to say on its own so we have to take control of the mind so that is why <clears throat> when we are saying something and we want to make it worthwhile for us we listen to it if you want to make your simran your repetition your chanting your mantra effective don't merely speak listen to what you're speaking because when you will listen to what you're speaking your attention will go exactly inside if you don't Your attention will go to the secondary and third, tertiary thoughts that are going into your head all over around the world. Kabir says, "I'll tell you in Hindi and translate it for you." Mala to karme phire, karme is hands, mala beads. Mala to karme phire, jeeb phire, mukh mahi, manwa to chahu desh phire, ye to simran nahi. that your beads are in your hand and you are moving the beads your tongue is repeating words the mind is going all around the world don't even think it is similar it's not a repetition no use it's a waste of time therefore he explains in the next verse how the meditation to be successful through repetition of words should be done with the mind the mind must repeat now when we try to force our mind to say some words you might have noticed in the beginning the tongue moves with it is not the mind repeating is a tongue repeating and you are listening to something the mind is free to think of anything else when you think when thoughts are coming has your tongue ever moved never thoughts are pure conversation in the mind and the tongue never moves with it that's how the simran should be done that should be thought should be replaced the chanting and the simran is only effective when the thoughts are replaced by those words not that the tongue repeat the words and the mind is allowed to think whatever it likes even there when you even replace the thought second tertiary thoughts will come when i have a meditation exercise with me, myself like a, we are having an intensive meditation retreat we are having two of them this year two next year and i sit with people to meditate i tell them beforehand that when you repeat the words another you can listen to some other part of the mind still speaking repeat in two tongues both the languages in different uh, if you hear three in three in the dalai lama i told him in eight all of them should be repeating the words their their mantra was very simple om mani padme hum that could be repeated but you know how they repeated it in the, in the border with tibet and where i went they had a big stone on the way some rock they would write these words all over it 
one thousand times, and they would be while walking go over it one, one round one thousand, similar done, two rounds two thousand. That's how they were doing it. Or they had a prayer wheel in their hand, with the same mantra written all around it, and you swing like this one hundred mantras done, swing twice, two hundred, and the thoughts are all somewhere else. <laughs> what what are you getting out of it? these rituals that we have created outside they do not leave you any any inkling of what is happening inside to go inside you must go inside with your attention completely and put your attention on what you are listening more than anything else if you listen to what is inside strange things happen supposing you try to listen to your words that you are speaking and this is another challenge for all of you just try to listen to the words that you are thinking and you will hear other sounds that you have not heard before those sounds are not words they are sounds where those sounds are coming from people hear sound of bells inside so like conch blowing inside like little bells blow, ringing inside nothing to do with these ears you can plug plug these ears you can still hear the sounds where do those sounds come from the sounds come from your soul inside the soul is a is some, something that has the capacity to be conscious but supposing there nothing around to be conscious of what it be conscious of itself how will it express its own consciousness it will express itself in different forms in different ways at different levels where you are without or with the bodies in the physical body the soul expresses itself in the form of a music a sound that so melodious that no outside sound we have created with musical instruments can compare with it each one of us has that if you listen to the words you repeat you will hear the sound you listen to the sound you will be pulled inside to your own self and become unaware of the body much faster than by effort now here again is something effortless why the sound pulls you you don't go and search for it just like love pulls you sound pulls you and as you examine that sound further you find it's a secret to our own consciousness that is why this particular yoga that i learned from a master which i practice which has yielded results is called surt shabd yoga <coughs> surt means tension shabd means sound yoga means union the union can be achieved by putting your attention on the sound of your own self not outside sound people said to me when they heard about my interest in sound they said to me a lot of recordings meditational recordings very beautiful i played them i played those dvds and i played those cds the sound was beautiful taken at the sea shore is the sound of the sea sound of nature sound of birds chirping sound of different musicals sound of musical that seem to seem to uh, simulate the sound that have been described like little bells big bells but we they didn't do it now they were doing it all the time churches have big bells on top of that big bells calling us there there are sounds of the bells in, in every temple in hindu temples the mosques call the the long bar ba is given by the molvi the priest is calling by loud voice in the morning calling everybody sounds are being repeated because it's the sound that pulls our soul our attention within to the soul but we make them outside and think that will pull us into the soul it doesn't they're just symbolic it is true that the sounds that come inside by themselves resemble the sound of a big bell that's true it does not mean that the big bell outside can help us the big bell inside can it's true that the sound inside resembles the long sound of a conch or the long sound of a uh, of an, any musical instrument it resembles that but it's not the same this one has a pull inside which it draws you inside makes you forget your body faster than any effort you can put in but the outside sound cannot do it so we are very often creating images outside we have even created temples outside whereas the real temple has been gifted to all of us right on our bodies in our head best temple best church best synagogue 
very best we all carry with us and we go around looking for outside man made temples man made mosques and churches forgetting we are carrying the real thing with us we sometimes have to make the shapes also of the outside buildings to resemble our own head they used to make domes at one time this is the real dome to put your attention in to go with this with this dome if you want to go to the real church real place of worship god is sitting inside here not in those man made things those are symbols they were designed to remind us to go to the real thing but we began to go only to the man made things real thing is made by the creator this shape has been given to us by the creator this whole system has been put into us by the creator and that is why when we when we want to get any real knowledge it has to be found inside there is nothing worthwhile to find outside on a spiritual path i am making a very bold statement i am saying there is nothing worthwhile outside then why are we going and looking for even a perfect living master he is also outside at least we are trying to make some exceptions am i suggesting that even a perfect living master we see outside who has that awareness and can give us this is also not real yes he is also not real he cannot be more real than anything else that is around us if this world is illusion if this world is maya just created by our own perception created by your own consciousness then a perfect living master is no different and also created by your perception then how can he be different from the rest of the illusion an answer was given to this question by a famous yogi from india who visited this country more than 120 years ago his name was vivekanand swami vivekanand came and he was not known he was poor guy sitting outside on the steps of a american lady and she asked him questions that he spoke good english so the conference world conference of religions was taking place so he was invited to speak there and he gave a very good speech on the second or third day when he was speaking he said this he said friends i have been telling you for two days that this world is unreal it's illusion it's maya it's not real what you think it is but if i am telling you that then i must also be unreal because you are seeing me in the same way as you are seeing the rest of the world the truth is i am also equally unreal as the rest of the world with one difference the rest of the world is pulling you to itself and making you stay here forever and this illusion is making you go within yourself and find the reality that's the only difference one is leading you to the discovery of the fact it's an illusion and the other part is taking you further into the illusion and allowing you to think it is reality so that why do we need this question has been asked by many people from me if god is inside us we are the seekers of god we are the seekers of the creator we are seekers of our true home which is inside us why do we need a third party interve- intervention why do we need a guru at all when the whole thing is inside us we don't need anybody outside we should have direct access to the reality and truth inside us where is a place for an outside agent to help us to go inside if the whole truth is inside the answer is simple that when we close our eyes thinking we are inside we are still outside we have no clue what is going inside we think closing our eyes is going inside no we are still looking outside but we can't see because we close our eyes it's it's common sense how can you be inside the fact that you have to withdraw your attention inside that the withdrawal of attention is something totally different from focusing attention that we have been trained continuously to focus attention on things and never taught how to withdraw attention how can we just close our eyes and say we are inside that is why if you know in our unreal experience a part of our reality comes to tell us how to go inside we should take advantage and see if it works then what will happen supposing by getting guidance from an unreal person who we qualify because of his awareness outside awareness of being total and we take the guidance and go inside what will we find 
that person was never outside he was also inside that is why remember a perfect living master is always inside us never outside we can't see him inside we don't know how to see him inside he appears as an image outside and once he has shown us that he is inside he remains inside he is not a guide in a human body in a human body he is going to die like us the human body is not forever where the soul is forever so even a perfect living master's truth reality is inside us not outside but to discover the master inside we just get guidance from what looks to be a master perfect living master outside it does not mean that he is something different from the rest of the illusion is part of the illusion reality is still inside all this truth comes to our knowledge to our awareness by going inside nothing is outside nothing outside is real it's all made up so that is why when we know how to go inside no matter how we learn it but that's only part of this picture i'm showing you there's another part of the picture which we designed before we ever came here if we are immortal souls and we were in great bliss in our true home where we try to go now why did we ever leave it where is the justification for leaving such a goody place goody goody place such a nice place where we were having all the time love bliss everything that is described and then come down into a place of pairs of opposites pain and pleasure tra tragedy terror all kinds of things happening hospitals prisons what was the need for this why did we leave such a nice place and come into a place where there is so much horror going on here any justification for that yes there has to be if our totality of consciousness is our totality of intelligence we couldn't be that stupid to leave such a beautiful place and come and get trapped over here no we made a complete arrangement before we ever left our true home of what we are going in for how we can come back complete arrangement was made beforehand we were intelligent enough for that what was the arrangement arrangement first of all we will have experiences that will look real but will not really be real like dreams we can have a very terrible dream a nightmare and we cry in the dream what's happening horrible we wake up thank god it was a dream now can you imagine that's exactly what we say when we go to a true home thank god the whole thing was a dream with a little dream with a little dream nothing was really real but when we were in it we wanted to make it real otherwise why would we go to just have a dream that we know it's a dream we nobody ever thinks a dream is a dream unless you are unaware of the person sleeping otherwise it's it's a day dream just are thinking about something you want to make a dream real you should not know who you are where you are sleeping and take another body to run around in the dream and wake up in the body which you went to sleep to make the dream real the whole show of experience to create an experience through consciousness was designed to make reality not dreams not illusions of course the process could be called illusion the process could be called dream making but once it is made it was made into reality this is real where we are sitting here for us this is the only reality not only is it real it's the only reality we have somebody i am talking to you about other levels of experience they are imaginary right now they could be there maybe they are there maybe they are not it's just somebody's imagination this is real where we are sitting here here we are talking where our bodies are this is real do you know we get the same feeling when we are dreaming dream that's real till we wake up we can't know what is reality sometimes we speak the truth also in a dream many of you must have had a dream where you could feel it's a dream and the, and you ran around telling other people you know it's a dream it's not real and you woke up there were no other people <laughs> so although you were speaking the truth you were not aware of the truth same thing happens here we are talking of truth we are talking of higher consciousness and yet if this is not real who am i talking to this is we have not created dreams we have created realities through the process of dream that's the most marvelous miraculous way in which nature has constructed these whole universes 
that we have been able to create levels of reality. The other thing is, at one time we can have only one level of reality in our consciousness. When we sleep, this reality disappears. Other one becomes real. We wake up, that becomes unreal, this becomes real. We go to the higher level of consciousness, to the astral plane, become unaware of this body, that alone becomes real, this becomes dreamlike. We go to still higher level, that becomes real, everything else is unreal. At all levels we have only one level of reality, except when we reach the top. This totality of consciousness holds the, all the dreams together, it holds all the levels together. At that point, you can see the whole structure of creation from a single consciousness. That's the greatest experience possible, that according to me. I can't even imagine, contemplate in any way a greater experience than totality of consciousness where the entire creation is within that consciousness and all levels are there. Perfect living masters who are amongst us as human beings, part of this show, carrying that consciousness of totality. They can share anything with us here because they are not learned people. They are people who are actually experiencing all levels of creation at the same time. And they can operate as real at every level and they are operating at every level even when we see them here. They are perfect living masters. Very rare. Why are they so rare? My master, Baba Sabal Singh Ji used to say, at no time in history have we had very few, very many, too many of these perfect living masters. Even in Kalyug, Iron Age today, he said there are no more than those that can be counted on the fingers of the two hands. Such a huge population and so few masters. And yet we say, wherever there's a seeker, the master will come and find himself. They said when the chela is ready, the guru appears, Indian saying. When the disciple is ready, guru will appear. You can't find a guru. You cannot ever find a true guru. You can find some gurus who look like gurus. You can find gurus from their dresses they wear. You can find if they've got all ash on their bodies. You can find if they are talking in a particular way. You can, you can, they will claim to be gurus. There are so many gurus who claim they are gurus. And none of them can be perfect living masters. Why? Why not? Why if a person is claiming to be a guru, why can't he be a perfect living master? Because perfect living masters have not come to explain something to anybody. They have come to pick up the marked souls who are seekers of that time. Period. They have not come to, to propagate any religion. They have not come to propagate any theory. They have come with a simple purpose. These are seekers ready to go back now. And in this time, this arrangement has been made. Who made the arrangement? Seeker, not the guru. The seeker made the arrangement, I'm ready to go, come and take me. And the master appears and takes him. If a master appears and accepts you and says, I accept you, which is often called initiation by a master, perfect living master. If he says, I accept you, we'll go back home. Your journey is over. Your discovery of this event completes your task of going back home. Rest is merely a process that is automatic. It will go through. But the mind doesn't accept it. So since we are functioning with our mind, mind says, now what am I supposed to do to do that? Okay, meditate. Okay, follow a particular diet. Follow this, follow these rules. Mind says, this looks like something real. Mm -hmm. This, I can bite on this one. But if somebody says, to go to your true home, what do you require to do? Nothing. Nobody will believe it. You require something to do, so they give you all the instructions what to do. The mind carries on. Especially those who are very serious seekers, when they seek very strongly, they fail. The ones who are the most serious, they fail the most. They say, what happened? I remember uh, in Great Master's time, in the Dera in India, there used to be a disciple of his who was a top official in a small state called Kapurthala, next door state. And there he was finance minister, he was uh, the 
ju chief justice at one time, judge, he was holding those high positions in a small state. Since he's passed away, I can even give you his name. His name was Dariai Lal Kapoor. The one Dariai Lal Kapoor, he's written some books also. Dariai Lal Kapoor, when he retired, he came to the master and said, Master, I have retired. I want some seva. I want to do service. The great master said, you are a highly educated person. You held high positions. You can take any job you want in this era. You can be the secretary general. You can be the president. You can do anything in this place. I welcome you. He said, no, master, if you permit me, I want to be your doorman. I want to stand outside your door. Great master said, all right. So this man, the Riyailal, spent the rest of his life standing outside the door. But he enjoyed it. He enjoyed how the disciples would come, full of so much love, and he saw the love and devotion of disciples they never seen before. He was very, he was enjoying his seva as a darban, as a doorman for great master's house. After a couple of years, he said, Master, I have enjoyed my seva, but I have missed out on something. He said, what have you missed out on? I have missed doing my meditation. You initiated me, gave me Nam Dan, and said, do this meditation. And I've been standing outside your door, enjoying myself, and never done meditation. Now, Master, I understand this summer, you are not going to the hill station where you normally go, which was called Dalhousie Hill Station in India. Can you give me the keys of your house? So with the great ambience and the great energy of that house, uh, I'll go meditate there quietly, three months. I'll spend my whole time in meditation and catch up with the lost mind. Chris Masters took out the keys. Here are the keys. Go. He went there with the great anticipation. He'll do great meditation now. And when he reached there, a plumber came. I'm glad somebody's here. We had to do the plumbing in the house. Another man, an electrician came in. And there was more disturbance there than even he had in the Dera. He tried very hard and he could not meditate. After three months, completely desolate, disappointed, he came back and told the great master, here are the keys, I am sorry, I failed. Great master said, no, you didn't fail, you passed. He said, master, I could not do any meditation, I tried very hard. He said, that is exactly what you were expected to do. It's not meditation that will take you beyond the mind, only love and devotion. This spiritual path is love and devotion, prem, bhakti, period. Rest is for our mind. Sometimes to tire our mind out, because the mind believes it can do anything by its own struggle. That is not true. It can, it can enhance its ego, an ego that makes the I-ness stronger than the togetherness. Iness that makes it even more difficult to find the totality in us. And every time you make more effort, I have done so much meditation, I have done so much seva, I have done so much literature, I studied all the books so much. More I, more I becomes a bigger wall. I have shared these views with you because I found that the great master was a perfect living master. What he said, he delivered. It was not an academic study. He gave instructions which worked. I am sharing these with you as seekers of the same path, that they may be useful to you, because they were useful to me. Only for that reason I'm sharing. I'm not sharing anything from books. I might have given a few couple of quotations, but this is an experiential process, personal experience. Do not believe anybody, certainly not believe me, for anything I've said, unless you can verify by your own experience. This path is not blind faith, it's a living faith. If you want to test out, you must work out, go within and find the truth. I'll join you later again, thank you.